everyone. I have finally decided to do a very quick video about my number one pet peeve when it comes to email. My number one pet peeve is when people do not put a phone number in their signature line. And I have seen this happen more and more over the past few years. I don't know what is going on and I don't understand why at work in a business environment, people feel they don't need to put anything other than their name. That, that's very frustrating to me. And I just had this happen five minutes ago. We needed to get hold of someone, a client of ours, immediately. We sent an email to them. Of course, they're not checking their email, but I had to get hold of them in the moment. No phone number. We have no contact information for them because when they send us emails, all it has is their name. And we have met via Zoom before, so the email was just fine. But today it was not fine. We needed to get a hold of this individual. I can't tell you how many times this has happened and how frustrating it is for me as the receiver on the other end. And I also want to talk about the message you are subliminally sending to people without even realizing it. What is that message? Don't bother me. I don't want you to call me. The only way you could reach me is via email. I'm important. I don't have time to take your phone calls. I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want to be distracted. So that's some of the perceptions. That's only a few. Uh, don't even get me started on the subject. But what I want to do is quickly make this educational for you. I just taught this last month to an organization here in Las Vegas. The client especially wanted me to focus on email communications and protocol and etiquette. And so I'm going to give you the quick rundown and please, please, please follow my advice. So first of all, your guidelines, the subject line is important. Your subject line should match what is in your email. So, and usually it does, but when this falls by the wayside is when email goes back and forth between two people. And then all of a sudden, one of those individuals will change the subject, but they don't change the subject line. Well, how do you think most of us sort our emails? How do you think most of us prioritize our emails? We look at the subject line. We also probably look at the sender, who's sending that. But you've got to be clear on your subject line. It helps other people prioritize their emails. If they have to search for something and it's based on a topic, topic, they'll be able to look at that quickly and know that that email is relevant to the topic. So, and how I view this, just to let you know, I view it as laziness. I view it as people are just lazy today. They're in a big hurry and they don't wanna make the extra effort, but that's also where the star assistants or star employees stand out because they'll take the extra time. All right, the next piece after your subject line, as you're getting, or yeah, subject line, your greeting. You need to have a greeting. Don't just jump in to your topic. And yet I'm seeing this more and more. I'm also seeing a lot of very casual greetings. Hey, everyone's saying, hey, now, H-E-Y. You have to remember that email is still a business tool. It's business protocol. It's not text, okay? So as far as your greetings, Here's why your greeting is important or having a greeting is important. It sets a professional and respectful tone. It helps establish a more personal connection. It serves as a soft introduction to your email. Um, it engages the reader right away and it impacts first impressions. And your greetings don't always have to be hello or hi. Greetings I use will be happy Monday 
or happy Friday. Uh, what are, I'm trying to think what are some other greetings, but be creative or high team, um, high star team, things like that. Be creative in your greetings. All right, so we've done the subject line, the greetings. Next, the body of your email needs to be clear and concise. People do not have time to read lengthy emails today. And that is another request that we have had for training over the past year by organizations saying to me, please teach our administrative professionals how to be clear and concise in their communications. So know what you want to say, think about how to word it, present your information, be clear, be direct. You will help the receiver, which in the long run will help you get more of what you want. The signature line, please, please, please. A signature line is very important. Everyone does not always want to email you. What if I want to send you a surprise gift in the mail, which we do <laughs> for our clients? What if I want to send you a special card? So don't assume and don't make people work to get your information. Again, this is where I feel like we really don't care about other people. I don't want to give you a lot of information. If you want my address, you're going to have to write me again. Have everything in one place. And I do see some assistants who do an excellent job in their signature lines. So for example, my signature line, first of all, have sincerely warm regards. Think about what you're going to say in that closing, but it should include your name. So I've got Joan Burge, title, founder and CEO, your address, suite numbers, telephone numbers. If they're allowed to reach you via cell, then have a cell phone number, have an office phone number if you have to. Um, a website, depending on you know your organization would be good. And recently I had an assistant tell me that they put their uh, hours of operation because they're on a hybrid schedule and they, their hours that they're in the office, the hours that they're not in their office. So just remember, the more information you give people, the easier you are making their lives. And you're also going to look more professional. So that is it. Those are my pet peeves. Please raise the bar and start being a role model to others for what they should do. And also, you never know when I might want to call you and say hello.